Okay, so we've kicked this thing into action. We found a server. Awesome. Alright, so we are streaming. Not everybody's here yet, but that's fine. Ah oh, yes, I get to do this now, don't I? There we go. So, who have we got? Um, we are having a Chris coming along shortly. There's a Mark who's not quite with us yet. And a Liz who is still on Do Not Disturb. Kidoke. To be fair, it's still, what, nine in the morning for her? <laughs> Hopefully this weather finds everybody okay. Oh, <laughs> it's too much. Boiling. Yes. The unfortunate consequence of having houses built that keep in the heat. It's like a sauna in here. Aha! Uh, Chris okay. number two, and suitable substrates, welcome along my dudes! Hello? Yep. Do we have a second Chris? Uh, nope. Hello, there we go, nice. So a short, a Mark, and a Liz still. Uh, Mark is joining on his... Oh, no, he's not. Dave, you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Cool, cool. Just checking. Haven't heard a peep out of you yet. I did say hello when you came in. Did you? Oh, I thought, I thought that was yeah. Chris. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I think I said it at the same time as Chris. Ah. <laughs> Tai Ming. Yes, I am here today. I've just been in the middle of getting over some kind of, you know, seasonal cold or whatever. So I might be a bit more muted this time. But, That's uh... fine. I'll be you. A lot of it going around. Mm -hmm. I think so. I just started my, um, new job this week. Ah, so, like, nicely done. Thank you. But it's a lot of, like, after I had the last, like, month and a half off, it's suddenly a lot of, like, half-six wake-ups. Oh dear. Is, I forget whether we're on stream or not, but it's kicked my behind. And, uh, <laughs> we are on stream at the moment, yes. So. Ah, cool. Don't give away any more personal details than you no, need to. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to dox myself. But that's cool. Okay, oh, there we go. Who's this? This would be the Marky Mark. It's me. Sorry. Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> No, it's fine. I was running behind too. Uh, my PC decided to crash half an hour before we started, so... Um, managed to get everything up and running just in time, so we're all good. Alright, so we won't wait for Liz just yet because, you know, it's still 9 in the morning where she's at, so... We'll kick this into action as quickly as we can. So that means I turn off the Plinky Plunky. I also turn off the ship ramble. And we will just play our intro video, even though it's the season one intro video. Paramount didn't give us any budget for the season two just yet, so um, we're still waiting on that. But hey, we're here, and we're at our new starting time. So uh, hopefully this isn't the BBC screwing us over like they did in 1996. Not that I'm still bitter about that, but you know... I had to wait a year and a half for the resolution of Best of Both Worlds, God damn it! and I've never forgiven them for it. But I'm good, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm settled. Okay, so, intro video, we'll be back in a couple of seconds, folks, don't go anywhere.
folks, welcome to the continuing adventures of the USS Combs. No, your chronometers are not malfunctioning, and I don't think you've entered into a, a, a time-space vortex. We are on a different time. That was deliberate, so thanks for joining us, folks. And uh, as usual, I am uh, joined by the majority of our faithful crew. Hello. Hello. Right then, Hello. so before we get going, um, <laughs> on a very enthusiastic Sunday afternoon for us anyway, uh, let's get things moving. Mr. Bell, I do believe you have a new piece of work to promote. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's called My Grease Fire Life. Um, sort of a uh, slice of life thing about, uh, well, working in a sort of little diner that's a lot like uh, Dick's Last Resort or in the UK we have uh, Karen's Diner. You know, the ones where uh, they're intentionally rude to you. Uh, I, I play the manager in this. Um, and yes, uh, indeed, there is quite a lot of salty language in this. <laughs> uh, once again, I'm a bit too much fun doing this. Uh, so I'm in episode two. Which is what we've so got the, in front of us right here. Yep. So I'm basically the manager telling somebody, tell them to, and explicit deleted. Um, if this is the image of you, then I can assure people that Chris is nowhere near that blonde. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that guy has hair. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say nothing, but okay. You got me. <laughs> Mr. Powell. Yep. Hello, uh, yeah, just kind of the, the same with me at the moment. So I've got my YouTube review channel on the Atta Crisp, where I just review a bunch of retro games. I'm still in the middle of doing my Yakuza Zero review um, with the new job, and that is going to take a little while, but you know, it's cooking. Uh, and in the meantime, there's a whole bunch of like older videos you can peruse at your own leisure. Smashing. Thank you. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So, uh, we've got Mr. Bell, we've got Connie, we've got Mark. Uh, not everybody's signed into uh, Foundry as of yet. Of course, we're going to need somebody to share a screen for Mr. Dave. Okie okay. Thank you very much, Mama. Spiffing. So. Um, yes, we're waiting on our XO, but she will be along when she's along. And uh, that's kind of interesting, really, because the story that we're currently going under is all to do with uh, the Combs' XO, and whether or not she's a Klingon spy. So, yes, a couple of weird things have happened to the Combs' crew. Uh, Traza woke up finding herself, well, a Klingon, rather than half a Klingon, but uh, apparently her uh, real name is Cora of House Mokai, and she was captured along with an Ascade of House Mokai, downloading um, Starfleet fleet positions and um, prefix codes, and about to make off back to the Klingon Empire, perhaps. But something very fishy is certainly going on, and so the Combs crew have taken it upon themselves to try and track down what's actually going on here. Uh, naturally, House Mokai, being the somewhat uh, secretive and great house that they appear to be, uh, proving a bit difficult to track down outside of the uh, Klingon Empire, so as such, our crew have taken a bit of a sojourn with one of their Klingon friends into the Empire itself. So, we have teamed up with Captain Akul and the crew of the IKS Mapui in order to venture into the Empire and try and find out who these, who this Korra and Ascade of House Mokai might actually be. And whilst we haven't found an awful lot of information, apparently the last record anyone in the Empire has of either of these characters is that um, the 
Ascade of House Mokai was last seen at a station in the Empire. Hang on a second. Uh, do, 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 do. So, uh, a, a scar day of House Mokai was uh, last seen at a way station in uh, the Empire, so you guys were heading in that general direction when the Mapui was accosted by a pair of birds of prey claiming to be members of House Mokai, and uh, when the Mapui refused to turn around and go back the other way, uh, they basically attacked you. Uh, the Mapui tried to get away using cloaking device, but the uh, Mokai Birds of Prey emitted some kind of strange energy pulse that caused a resonation within the Mapui's um, engines, essentially pretty much allowing them to track you without even uh, the, with even the cloaking device on. So, we find ourselves in the middle of a space fight. So, unless folks have got any questions, comments, concerns, or any reminders uh, that I haven't already gone over, then let's jump into the action. So the last thing that happened was, you've got two House Mokai Birds of Prey, the Makui is taking on one, but you guys have jumped into your smaller ship, the Guicha in order to take on the other bird of prey. So, the last thing we did was we set up a, an attack run, basically. You guys uh, scanned for weaknesses, found one, set up an attack run, and then let fly with the weapons of the creature and did a bit of damage. Uh, their shields have been knocked down to about a third of what they were before, and you managed to knock out their sensors, or at least deal damage to their sensors. So, not bad going, all things considered. So then, we have had the two going, then the Klingons going, now Garrow just went in order to fire weapons, so now it's the Klingons' turn. And they, likewise, are now going to try their own black and firing their own weapon systems at you. So let's see how this goes. I am going to spend some threat here to add myself an extra dice. Three successes. Spooky. Which means that uh, we roll for the disruptor cannons on the clinch. Yep. But before we do that, we need some special effects. So the Bird of Prey, even though it was uh, hit by the, uh, the Guichar as the Guichar sails past them, the Bird of Prey itself kind of swings around and brings its own uh, wing cannons to bear. Let's see how they do. I got one extra, which means I roll one extra dice, because that was pretty bad. Yep, I did an awful, awful job there, so I am going to spend a threat and roll those results. One, two, three, four, five, six dice. Not much better. Two, three, four, and three effects. So that's essentially seven. So you guys didn't do any kind of evasive maneuvers. You've got a scale two ship, which means that your uh, ship has resistance two, so that's for a five. Which means the Gleechar's shields are knocked down by five, but because you have suffered five or more from a single hit, that means we get a breach. So let's find out where the breach is on the Gleechar. Structure. Right then, so, as per the rules for Starship Combat... Uh, do, 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 do. Whenever the structure Sif suffers one or more breaches, the entire ship shudders, so I'm going to ask you all to join me in the Star Trek Shake. Thank you. 
so a couple of power conduits might rupture, some of the consoles might explode, and some of the personnel, i.e. yourselves, are kind of thrown about the Gleechar Bridge a little bit. But, uh, breaches are suffered to equal to or greater than half the scale of the ship. You've got a scale 3 ship, so thankfully that doesn't mean uh, anything bad. So, what I need to do is... I have to now roll a challenge dice, and if it's, uh, if it's an effect, one of you might be getting a console explode in your faces. See how we do. No. Okay. So it's general um, consoles exploding and the ship being thrown around from the impact. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, so, thankfully, nobody got injured, but everybody got tossed around a little bit. So, who do we have left? For you lot, we so far haven't had Tavish or Sot or Flesk go. Now, if we go actually to um, Starship Position Tasks and go to Sick Bay. When the ship has suffered one or more breaches during a scene, characters in sick bay can choose a single department and attempt a medicine task with a difficulty of two. The next task that uses that department may re-roll a d20. Now, unfortunately, you took a breach to your structure, and I don't think many of your... Uh, actually, that might not be true. What uses structure? Internal systems. Uh, ooh, regenerating shields uses structure. So, what Dr. Sot can do... Pardon me. Is... Um, if Dr. Sot wants to uh, basically patch people up whilst they're on the bridge... Yes, at some point thing. during your turn, of course, um, you can do a daring and medicine task assisted by the ship's computers in medicine. If successful, at difficulty two, anybody using the structure department, like for, for example, if they try and regenerate shields, um, can re-roll one of those d20s, representing injured personnel being rushed back to work. So, with that I... knowledge, go on, Mark. I was going to say because I have a uh, repair team leader, if I do damage control, so restoring the shields. If I'm successful, I can spend three momentum and repair that breach. Cool, so between the two of you, you can shield. get things um, going pretty well. So, yeah. the idea comes down, I say idea, the, the, the point now comes down to what would you like to do first? Power, shields, um, repair breach, sick bay, what do you want to do? I would say well, the most pressing thing is repair the breach. Uh, if I succeed repairing the shields, or... <clears throat> I can just spend the three momentum instantly to repair the breach. So oh. we do two in one. Yeah. Alright then, so we got Flesk going next. Nicey nice. So repairing a breach for you is usually what? Repair team leader, that was it. So, do, 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 giving them guidance. If you succeed at a damage control task and spend three momentum to repair a breach. Damage control, that sounds like daring and engineering to me. Oh, daring, engineering, uh, deflector, shield, force field, technology as a focus, and desperation breeds inspiration as a determination. Seeing as this is to do with structural damage, I'll actually opt for your manufacturing and metallurgy focus instead. Cool. Since that's what uh, basically took the hit was just your, your hull integrity, so we will go with that, if you please. I Difficulty one. I'm also tempted to use my uh, last Legion of Honor, or no, Starfleet Medal of Honor. Yes, I'm going to use my Starfleet Medal of Honor. So if I am successful, I can gain two bonus momentum, so I'm only taking one from the pool 
to repair the breach. Alrighty. That looks like five successes. <laughs> Woof. Uh, I do probably don't actually need to use the Medal of Honor. Probably uh, not, so you may as well save that. Yep. So now you need to uh, take away some momentum. You got, uh, I said it was, what, difficulty one, so you got four over. I banked one, so you've got three remaining. So those three bonus momentum that you just gained can be spent on uh, repairing the breach to the structure. Nice. Does that also give us the shields back as well? Um, that's a separate. That's a separate one. That's a separate task. No problem. Well, we've got a full momentum pool if someone wants to get us back up and running. Now, because you actually uh, did do damage to the other uh, ship, the Klingon essentially lose their uh, you lose their go. So it's all you guys now. So what you want to do? Uh, Tavish and Sot are the two remaining. Uh, if Tavish wants to try and get shields back up, because your power is not too bad for the moment then uh, the good idea might be for Dr. Sot to do his thing next. Yeah, put Dr. Sot go next. Yeah, sure. Okay. So for that, uh, we are going to want Dr. Sot. Uh, let me see. Um, Chris, Mr. B, if you mm -hmm. could be the Guicha for me because the green shark gets to help. From Dr. Sot, we need daring and medicine. I mean, emergency medicine as a focus would definitely apply here because people have got bumps, bruises, and scrapes. For the Gui Char, can we please have computers and medicine? One dice. Okay, computers and medicine. There we go. One dice, go for it. Very good. Not bad. Three Not successes bad. in total, you need two, one over. So, the next task that uses structure, which will be the next one if, uh, if Tavish does it, if, when Tavish does it, will mean you get to re roll one of those d20s for free. So, uh, it sounds like Tavish was the one who maybe took a bit of a knock need to get uh, rushed back to her position, maybe from just losing her footing, because the Klingons don't have seats. They don't believe in seats for certain uh, p positions on the ship. So uh, in this case you were thrown around a little bit, but this does mean that after Dr. Sot's successful treatment of Tavish, Tavish can now go and try and re regenerate some shields. So. Uh, Pony, since you haven't rolled yet, you can roll for uh, Tavish. Or actually. And uh, Mr. Bell, you can stay being the Guichan, actually, because we get the help from the ship for this as well. So, okay. Dave, are you wanting to restore power or restore shields? I would recommend shields. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say shields. Cool. So, um, Connie, if you could open up Tavish. Tavish is giving us control and engineering. Um, this is shields. She's got a focus for shields, so we can do it with focus. Yeah. Uh, the Gui chart gives us structure and engineering, and we can always re-roll that dice if it gives us a, uh, a naff roll. One, one dice? One dice from the Gui chart, yes please. Okay, here we go. That's Ooh, not bad. You might not need to re-roll after all. Ooh, except maybe that 18, but you got one over what was needed, so you do have the option of re-rolling uh, one of those dice, Connie. I would recommend re-rolling the 18. Indeed, indeed. Because the more extra, bo um, the more bonus momentum we get, the more shields we can recover. Oh, that was much better. So that's one, two, three successes. You needed one. This does cost you one point of power, which I'm taking off now, but. Um, the initial success grants you two shields, and you got two over and above, so you do actually get two six shields back, which means your shields are back up to full again. Uh, I, I was going to say, uh, you, you, you say it, <laughs> uh, Mark. 
Oh yeah, uh, I'm giving it all she's got. Uh, <laughs> whenever it's going to attempt a power requirement. Uh, yep. Roll one challenge die. On an effect, reduce that power requirement by one to a minimum of zero. Alright then, Mark, since you brought it up, you may as well do it. Roll that Former challenge, challenge dice. dice. Ooh, two pips. Not a not a not a effect, I'm afraid. In addition, when you succeed at a power management task, you restore power equal to your engineering score. This was not power one. management, this was regenerate shields. Ah, never mind. Close! But not quite. But whenever someone attempts to roll challenge dice on an effect, that power requirement is reduced by one. So, yes, it took a bit of power from the rooting power from the engines to regenerate your shields, but your shields are looking good. Round um, two. Does that mean. Go I was going to say, does that mean any time anybody uses any power, uh, it's the rolling of the dice? Yes. Yeah, okay. Cool. So. Um, one of you goes first, again, as before. You're currently at Got medium arrow. distance um, from your opponents, using the asteroids as a, as a bit of uh, additional cover, having to weave between them. So whether or not you want to close the distance to make your shots a little um, easier, or if you want to this time maybe try for evasive maneuvers, it's entirely up to you, however you want to do it. Are we still in then a... Attack maneuver. No, you've used maneuver. that. Um, so any attack maneuver you do has to be set up now in this new round. Same goes for scanning for weaknesses. Those have all been used. They need to be redone if you want to pile uh, advantages onto your ship for you, uh, or your efforts rather, advantages onto your efforts before you go trying to do an attack. Uh, okay. Lian Zhang. Yep, Lian Zhang. Uh, just thing if we would try to scan for weaknesses and if it's the you know if they're both the same ship then maybe that same weakness could apply to the other ship if we can bank it that information I mean it's possible but in uh, in you hitting their exposed um, systems they have rerouted a bit of additional power uh -huh. so the same weakness might not be visible twice Pending, but in forcing them to reroute their power to cover that weakness, you might expose a new one. So if you want to do scanning for weakness first, that's fine. Unless you want to do um, attack or evasive maneuvers first. Um, we can scan for weakness on the other ship because we weaken that one. We can try and take a stop the other one attacking as well. Well, the other one at the moment is being. Um, is engaged with the Mapui, so it's uh, your choice if you want to divide uh, divide your efforts or not. Maybe uh, we focus on this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, focus. I was going to say focus on this one. I agree, Connie. Yep. Alrighty. So in that case, I guess. Uh, scan for weakness. Yeah. Oh. So, this is going to be um, Gurkau using control and science to use the sensors. We're going to get help from the Guicha. So, uh, Mr. P, if you could be the Guicha this time. We're looking for sensors and security. With the probability of looking and finding the weakness? Yep, sure, go ahead. If they've taken it away from somewhere, they might probability is high, they're going to put it somewhere else. Yeah, it's based on what we've So, the Guicha! Mm. Okay. Oh dear. Never the more. Ah, <laughs> Hello! Legion of Honor! <laughs> Do you have any left? I had one left, I think. The last one was from the experiments. Right. Okay, so this that was that was your last one then. Any more yeah. 20s and. You're going to have to rely on somebody else, but nevertheless, that was one success. You needed one success. So, you now have the uh, piercing quality on your weapon systems. So, let's put that here. Alright, so that was you guys, having just gone. Now it's the Klingons coming back. Unless we want to seize initiative. Unless you want to seize initiative. Maybe. I think we should seize initiative and get into an attack 
uh, Luva. Okay. Because at least we're set up to respond to whatever they do next. Okay. In that case, uh, two momentum, which I've just taken off, will initiate the ability for Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang to go next. So, what? since uh, our EXO is not here, let's have... Um, well, it's not going to be Mr. B, because he's going to get the fun part of shooting the, blade, the actual weapon systems. So... Let's have Mr. Powell, if you could be Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang, and if we could get this time, let's go with... Tony, if you could be the Guicha. From the Guicha, we are going to want to be... It would help if I looked up the helm maneuver. You're going with attack pattern, yes? Okay, so... Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang needs to give us Daring plus Con. And the Gui Chart needs to give us Weapons plus Con. And then, um, Mark, I'm going to need you to roll a challenge dice to see if you can negate the use of the power droid that's going to go on as a result of this. Cool. Uh, that was the one die. Why did you say I was rolling as Lian Zhang again? So, as Lian Zhang, we are looking for Daring plus Con. She's well, more than I'm likely doing, right? got um, foci for this. For the Guicha, we are looking for weapons plus con. Okay, just just the one dice, yeah. Just the one dice. The the Ooh. Guicha has yet to develop sentience. Not bad, not bad, not bad. All right, so that was actually. Let me see what the difficulty was, because I keep forgetting it's difficulty two. So, uh, you got four successes in total, so you can you get those two momentum back, and you have now initiated an attack pattern. Dave, there make up an attack arrow. pattern. And remember, it's, it's a Klingon ship, so it needs a Klingon attack pattern. He's, uh, he's probably he's going on. Yeah. Purpose for oh, the creature, yeah. maybe sad for the Attack Force One. <laughs> <laughs> Attack Force One. All right then. So, um, is the Guicha staying at a distance, or is the Guicha moving a little closer? Uh, do we get an what? advantage if we move closer with the attack pattern? Well, uh, at the moment, it's going to be um, uh, an up in difficulty for attacking from so far away because your disruptor cannons have got a range of close, and at the moment you're at medium. Uh, yeah, I'd say we should be closer then. So, the Guicha comes streaking out of the, uh, the cover of the asteroids. All right. Now the Klingons get their turn. Uh, ooh, let's see. They are going to try something a little different. And are going to try and regenerate their shields, which is control and engineering, structure and engineering. I am going to spend threat to give them an extra dice for this. Ooh, hello. Hmm. Okay. This is structure and engineering. All right, so they got four successes in total. They uh, needed, they needed is it one or two? One, all right, so this knocks power from the bird of prey. Actually, should have had power knocked off from the other times as well, so let's go down to that much. Uh, one success, they got four, but there's a complication, so in trying to reroute power to the shields, they blow out one of their shield emitters, which means they get one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So they almost get their shields completely back, but they've blown out one of their emitters, so their shield capacity is permanently reduced by one. Whoops. Never mind. 
Right, so now it's one of you guys going next, so... Well, do you want to regain some power first, or do you want to just go straight for the shoot bank fire? Go on, Garo. And you've got a full momentum pool to take an extra dice okay. as well. <laughs> go crazy. So, okay, I'm gonna go to the pool. All right then, so Lieutenant Garrow goes next using the tactical station. Can I also get Mr. Powell to be the Guicha? Does... He's taking extra dice. If he took a determination, I'm not saying he should. Would that be the maximum pool? Or is... Yes. If he took uh, an extra and dice and <laughs> um, a determination, that would be the maximum of five dice because the Guicha gets to roll as well. Because you've got the um. maximum <laughs> possible chance to hit. I don't know, Chris. Hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, if I took, yeah, I'll take I'll take determination then. So what's the um? What am I firing with? What's not What am I uh, using? So here? you are rolling on control and security. Okay. You can use your focus of shipboard tactical systems. Okay. Uh, apparently you're rolling three dice with a determination. Yeah, I've taken that off. Cool. And also we're getting the Gui chart to assist with weapons and security one dice. Oh, oh hello. Um, okay, can I use, um, I don't know, can I use the Legion of Honor or something here? If you've got it. Yeah. I've got one if you haven't. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, Legion of Honor. Alright, so that negates the complication. Oof. I want to blow out your own weapon systems here. But, nevertheless, we got two successes from Garrow, two more successes from the Guicha. So, the difficulty to hit the opposite ship was uh, gonna be four, but you brought it down thanks to attack pattern to make it three. You've got piercing on that, so let's see how you do. Mr. Powell, could you roll on the um, disruptor cannons, please? Do we get the extra damage, or is it for... Well, uh, that's a good point. The um, extra damage you can get off of this is gonna be either two or one. Depending on if you want to use an extra one to refill your momentum pool. Nah, damage. Damage, oh, so damage. <laughs> roll two extra dice then, please, Mr. Powell, whilst uh, Mark rolls a, uh, a dice for uh, power. Challenge dice for power, please. Nope, okay, so it gets expended. Nevertheless, uh, Chris, if you can... Um, there we go, thank you. Ooh, hello! Two Sorry, successes. Sorry, I forgot I was not moved for a second. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Right, so you have scored six with three effects. Kaboom! Alright, because these are disruptor cannons, they do extra damage with the effects, so that means you have rolled up... Good god, six, seven, eight, nine! Three, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you strip them of most of their shields in one go, and you inflict another breach. Would you like me to roll where it gets hit? Oh yes. All right then. Hold on to your pants, folks. Let's see what they what system the uh, engines. Interesting. There we go. We get to have a new ship for Liz. <laughs> Well, let's see what this damage means, I. So, the ship has now suffered um, breaches over half of its scale. Um, but, whenever the engine system suffers one or more breaches, it disrupts those functions temporarily. It, the uh, ship uses two power immediately. Uh, internal system for everything that requires the engines or has a power requirement increases in difficulty and complication range by one. All right. <laughs> that was a successful hit. Nicely done, Garrow. Big boom. That means that your um, 
piercing and attack pattern advantages have been used up. It's up to the Klingons now. So let's see, uh, they are going to want to do a bit of engineering related repair here, he thinks. 19 and 17, that was naff, so I am re rolling those. One success, that's better, which means at least the engine problem is gone and it no longer is leaking power. Right, so the Klingons, it seems, are having trouble with their uh, with their ship at the moment. But it's not yet you guys' turn. So I'm actually going to spend two more threat to bring the guy who was going to go after you up early so that he can do the following. And I may as well spend extra threat. Two successes, which means I got one, I got two, so two, four. There we go. Boom. They regain some of their shields, but at a cost of power. Right. Who wants to go next? Oh, Flask, Dr. Sot, or Lieutenant Tavish? Uh, I'm last. Uh, because whatever they want to do um, if I don't do well with my uh, challenge, well, uh, if I don't do well with my challenge dice, then I'm going to uh, try and get his, some power. Yep, your shields are still full. They haven't had a chance to shoot at you, probably because you've been wrecking their ships and they've been trying to fix it. So your shields are good, but your power is nearly halfway down. So uh, yeah, so power first. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I was going to say, do whatever you need to do first. And do power What's last. A... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can buy power, but uh... the only other thing I could do, maybe, that's useful in this situation, is put us into another attack run. Well, um... yeah, that's going to require a momentum spend to do the same task, oh, yeah. uh... and we'll up the difficulty of it. Would we still have that? But it comes back around to Garrow if I was to do that. Technically, yes. Hmm. Or no, because my con isn't actually that good, so maybe not. Or you could spend two momentum and try and create an advantage of some sort. Um, could be anything from. Um, make ship hard to hit, to make enemies easier to hit, to um, pretty much any advantage you can think of that will either impede your enemies or advantage yourselves. I think I'd go for an advantage, so it's sort of an, a, in building on our uh, knowledge of their weaknesses try to target a way to stop them regenerating the shields, so rather than targeting the ship in general, just try to target their ability to regen shields. Oh, so you want to be able to more easily target a specific system of their ship. Okay. If you spend two momentum and roll me reason and engineering, Mr. Flesk, see if you can um, create this advantage. And I am going for deflector shield force field technology as yep. my focus. that makes sense. Nice, two successes, which is pretty much on the money what you needed, so... Let me put that as a new advantage that you've just created. Uh, shield subsystem specifically, wasn't it? That's it. Okay, cool, you have created that advantage. It will now still be in use until it's basically uh, Flask's next to... So, who wants to go next, Tavish or Sot? Let Sot go next. Okay. So, same as before. Actually, Dr. Sot hasn't got anybody to yeah. assist this turn, so you could always um, either just sit this one out or um, assist Tavish in trying to regain power. Oh, I guess I can do that. It's not useful. Cool. I've got a good science stat that'll come handy at all. Well, 
It's going to need more engineering than science. Ah, that was being... Uh, Nevertheless, uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Internal system. So, power management is going to be daring or control plus engineering. Whichever one you want to use. As far as uh, Dr. Sot's concerned, um, patrol and engineering is going to make more sense. And your assistant, uh, so. Uh, who's one rolling dice. for Tavish? And by all means, Mark, roll the Tavish. So, uh, control and engineering. And yes, then please. Power system. Uh, give, focus. Give, oh. Giving it all she's got. Give me all she's got. Well, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, uh, any power that you uh, get. Oh, hello. Well done, Dr. Sot. Damn. All right, nice. Nice. Three successes and in total. Um, you needed two. No, 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 no. Go no. to. Um, uh, I'm giving it all she's got. Which means you get an additional... Are you restore power equal to your engineering score? Your engineering five. Is five. So, but um, I was trying to calculate how much you got over by, so whether or not that matters any, because one, two, three, four, five is all the power you need. Right, what? How much momentum bonus did we get? <laughs> so let's stick all that in there, then. Because that nice. was a lot. <laughs> Actually, let me pull it down by one because it wasn't that much. But, 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 but it was near, near to refilling your momentum thingy. So, yes. All right. So that's that round. We're back around to round three. So round two, the Klingons didn't do an awful much. Uh, you managed to pretty much put, poke holes in their in their ship. Uh, meanwhile, you've managed to successfully repair yours and bring power and shields back up to full. So you are looking good. Who wants to go first out of you guys? Oh, once again, it comes down to which advantages you want to set up beforehand. Uh, it's worked want... previously. <laughs> this is being set. I was going to say, do you want to do uh, exactly the same? Connie goes, then Lian, Jiang, then. Sounds good. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who, who was next yeah, after that. Garrow. With all the boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright then. So if we can have Gurkow mm. and uh, Chris Powell, if you could be the Guicha. So Gurkow is using control and science mm -hmm. with sensors, and the Guicha is oh. using sensors and security. God focus. Uh, God focus, yes indeed. Yeah. Oh, well done, Chris. Good. Nicely done, Gurkow. If I recall, it's just the one, but you have. Okay, once again, you've identified another weakness in their shields and or their structure for you to exploit, so your weapons now have the piercing quality. Are you spending momentum the same as before to maintain the initiative in order to do the uh, attack pattern? Or are you holding yeah. on to your momentum this time? Yeah, actually. Steal the momentum. Give it to uh, the engine. Alrighty then. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's have. I mean, Mark, you may as well be Lian Zhang for now. And Mr. P, if you could continue being the Guicha, we are looking for an attack pattern. So, from the Guicha, we are looking for weapons and con, one dice. From Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang, we're looking for daring and con. Difficulty two. Daring and con with the focus. Oh, 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 very nice. So you got one extra, which means that goes back in the pool, and you create your attack pattern. Do you want to move closer? Since that will what reduce that difficulty do down again. I'm okay with that, if there is. I hear no objections, therefore let's oh, go. Yeah. Alright, so scanning for weaknesses yielded one, and as a result, Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang is swinging the Guicha in on another attack run. Which means it's now the Klingons' turn. What's the ship in a state of? 
going to get attacked pretty soon, so I'm going to go a little bit different with the Klingons, seeing as you have brought yourselves within close weapons range. I'm going to spend a threat. One success, which means that was a miss. <clears throat> So the Klingons, in their haste, try and bring their weapons to bear and uh, fire on the Gleecher as it's coming in. No problem, Chris. Fortunately, the shot goes wide as the Gleecher uh, just kind of streaks in using well, this asteroid as a bit of cover. Klingons. Hmm. Don't have as much fire discipline as you guys, it seems. So, are we bringing the Garrow on next? Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot right. to Roll. ask. Um, can I... Who's around? Chris has just gone. So, can I get... Connie, can you roll me a challenge dice, please, to see if the Gweecha expended energy for um, that attack run? So, you will stuff control security. You? Yes, please. Uh, I'm going to spend one more determination and go for a full. <laughs> the full Dacker. <laughs> yep. All right. In that case, can I get? Well, Connie, since you're around, you may as well be the Guicha for this one. Weapons mm -hmm. and security, one dice, please. So, you hit with three, which is one over and above what you needed to hit. So you can either bank that momentum to your momentum pool, or you can spend it on extra damage. More Daka. More Daka. Alrighty. More Daka. <laughs> Connie, roll on your dis disruptor cannons uh, for damage, and then roll an extra one afterwards. Ooh. Let's see what the other one brings us first. Okay, that's better. Now, <clears throat> if you want, you can spend one momentum to re-roll uh, any of those damage dice. Like those two that brought you up nothing. Uh, what do we think? Yeah. Shall well, we? We got four. I see. Um. So. Alright, I will take the momentum away. Re-roll those two uh, challenge dice, please, for, for, uh, for damage. Okay. Wow. Moderately better. Okay. So you still got <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, with an extra effect makes for six. Minus piercing means that they suffer five, which means they're down to one and they suffer another breach. Let's go with the, <laughs> the next system. Picking them apart bit by bit. Engines gets hit again. Oh dear. We... Oh dear, also... oh dear. Did we get the advantage with this shield subsystem? Or does that target the subsystem? Or yes. The... Ooh, that's okay. right. You you went for shields rather than um, thingy. I forgot about that. Well, engines is where shields comes from anyway. So okay, okay. All right. All right. Let's see how we do. Uh, Where's the structure that it comes from? Dang it! Brain! Cannot remember. Internal systems, if you're bringing shields back, it comes off of structure and engineering. So you're hitting the engineering department, which will make hitting them for shields that much harder. So, um, rather than a breach, then you've knocked out their shields. So that was a successful hit on targeting their shields. Uh, you pretty much battered their shield system and then basically broke it. The punishing salvo. So, <laughs> what do the Klingons do next? Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, what have I already tried? 
I tried weapons already, didn't I? Uh, they now know that their end, that their shields are pretty much effed. So let's go with try our best and get some um, power back. And we don't manage it. So their systems are sparking and fizzing and there's all sorts of power conduits have ruptured and they're having trouble cycling power back to their engines. Or from their engines rather, so good grief. This is, this is death by a thousand cuts, this is... Whew. Alright, who of you lot want to go next? We've got Tavish, who can do um, power. We've got, um, I mean, Dr. Sot can help with anybody. We have Flesk, who can do something, anything. I mean, Set at this point, we just make it... Oh, is that just going to destroy the ship? Because they've got no shields, they've got how many breaches? Three? Uh, they've actually only got two because that last breach um, you specifically targeted their shield subsystems, okay. so they've taken out their shields. They suffered a breach to their engines, a breach to their sensors. If they suffer the same number of breaches as they, as they have um, scale, so in this case three, to any subsystem, it's basically kaput. So it all comes down to whether or not we're taking prisoners, I suppose. Yeah, I was about to say, can we get them to surrender? <laughs> they're, they're, they're a bit boned, but they're Klingons, they're not likely to. Um, you can use the comm system to try and signal for the Klingon vessel to basically surrender. Yeah, because I've got a persuasion focus and a... something that gives me... A worst case scenario if they're like, no, we don't um, want to surrender, or they blow themselves Mark. up. Yeah? Can you go on Tavish for a minute? Yeah, sure. Can you go to Advisor? Whenever you assist another character using Command Discipline, the character being assisted may re-roll a d20. So if that's what Flask and Tavish want to do with their turn, it's certainly viable. I mean, yep, okay, we'll do that. If Mr. Powell is back, which I don't think he is. No, he's not. Yeah. Um, then oh, yeah, we can get Sot to help with that as well. Once permission, when attempting a persuade task in an effort to prevent violence, we kind of looking at five, but we can reduce the persuade task by one to a minimum of one. Hmm. Ah, yes, the palm leaf of Pegasi peace mission. Okay, so this sounds like this is being a presence and command um, check being performed by Flesk, Tavish, and Sot. Using my focus in persuasion. So, uh, Connie, if you could be Dr. Sot, giving us presence, right. presence and command one dice. Uh, if we could have Ooh. Tavish do the same with one dice. Uh, can I have a Chris C do that, please? Uh, Mr. Bell, if you would Chris be so B. kind as to be uh, Lieutenant Tavish, please. Okay. Uh, right. Yep. Sorry. Um, what you are doing I... presence and command with one dice, uh, no focus. Can I have Doctor Sot use a focus in either cultural studies or composure? Cultural studies make sense. Yeah. But Psychiatry would as well, actually. Oh, yeah. I'm All going right. to re roll my 16. Okay. In the hope of getting something better. Thanks to Tubbish. You don't, but okay. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> we still have three successes. You lowered it, so. I do get a momentum in there. You basically throw open the comms channels and say, Klingon bird of prey, heave to and surrender, your ship is in pieces. We don't want to destroy oh, I was you. Gonna, I was going to say, uh, he can re-roll that dice if he wants. He already did. I did, okay. and I failed. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna take him prisoner. Oh. All right, so we're... the Klingons yeah. get to have their turn now. So, hmm, how are the Klingons to respond? Think of one way. So, let's see who's left of the Klingons. There's only three of them, so let's do this guy. And it, let's go. And he, oh, no, I got the wrong one. Mm. How much threat do I have? I'll throw one threat into this. See how this goes. You detect a sudden surge in their impulse engines as the bird of prey powers forward. Engines are gone. Alright, so I got three successes in total. The bird of Prakens and rams the Guicha in a maneuver not unlike the Jem'Hadar. So, because you got to close range, that didn't help the difficulty any, so it still is two. I got three in total. Um, Alright, so if successful, the attack inflicts a number of challenge dice equal to two plus the scale. Two, three, four, five. Ah, there we are, Chris. Just in time to see the enemy bird of prey ram the Guicha. I'll throw that extra one into damage. <laughs> With spread and vicious and devastating. Let's, let's see how it does. Woo! Uh, <laughs> that didn't help me at all. Let me see what I got. So, we got one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, two effects. The else some of those challenge dice equal to the target's scale. Right, um, Chris Powell, who just came back, can I get you no. to roll me two challenge dice, please? Certainly, uh, as the Guicha, yeah, possibly. As the Guicha, yes, please, please, please. This is how well. This is how much damage the uh, the other the other ooh hello the other ship suffers as a result of ramming you guys, right? So uh, they suffered four with spread and vicious and devastating. You got no things there. Uh, you didn't get piercing, so four is one. That goes to there. Let's put it there. <laughs> Okay, but what happens to the Guicha? What did I say we had? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With two. So that is spread and vicious spread. And spread work again. That was an area. Well, I know one way to find out, folks. Let's check the rules. Starship damage. Starship weapon effects and qualities. So spread. You, if one or more effect is rolled, you inflict additional hit to a random system, which deals half and rounds up by everyone. Okay, so I lost count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus your resistance of two means that you suffer. Six, which knocks your shields down by quite a bit and makes you guys suffer one breach. But before we get there, the second shot goes for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, an additional five, which means an additional three, which means your shields are completely down. Yikes. And that's a second breach right there. Oh dear. And devastating. Ooh, what does that mean? Well, let's check. Nope, nope, nope. 
Okay. Okay. The Guicha has suffered two breaches. Let's see where they go. Brace yourselves, folks. This could get messy. Breach number one. Structure. Everybody give me the Star Trek shake. Ow. Uh, I'm off my seat. <laughs> can I have... Connie, roll me a... Oh, no, I had you do it last time. Uh, who hasn't done this thing? Mm -hmm. Chris Bell, can I get you to roll me one challenge dice? To see if one of you gets hit with an exploding console. Do you know where to find it, Chris, or shall I direct you? Ah, uh, sorry, I missed that. I think my feet cut out there. Oh, okay. Um, Roll me one yeah, challenge sorry. dice, please. Um, one challenge dice. That would be uh, anywhere you want to get okay. it from. Just roll a challenge dice. Pray it's not an effect. Woo! That was close. Okay then. So everybody gets rocked around and uh, thrown from their seats. And the second system that takes a knock. Oh no! Structure again. Uh, -uh. uh, I'll be doing damage control on yeah. that <laughs> structure. But first, <laughs> oh no! If the total number of breaches in the structure system has is that you have suffered is equal to or greater than half the scale of the ship, which it is, then the system has been significantly damaged. The vessel suffers fires and/or minor hull breaches somewhere on the ship, forcing the area to be evacuated and sealed off. This makes it more problematic to reach parts of the ship in need of repair, increasing the complication range of all engineering tasks to repair systems by two. You also re reduce the ship's resistance by one. Oh dear. The creature gets severely damaged, but in the process, the other bird of prey has essentially crippled itself. And uh, it seems that their engine block has gone pretty much kablooey. Luckily for you, um, physics in space when it comes to ramming speed is a bit odd. <laughs> but as it happens, you two were uh, engaged in... The Gleecho was coming at the Bird of Prey. The Bird of Prey intercepted your, uh, your flight path in order to ram you. So there was a certain amount of... Um, buckling, but as a result, bang, when two forces in space meet, they actually go in opposite directions now as a result of the expenditure of uh, force. So the bird of prey is drifting away from you, the Guichar is drifting away from the bird of prey, and the bird of prey seems to suffer some kind of catastrophic uh, rupture in their engines, and your sensors detect basically plasma radiation from the warp core is, uh, is spilling forth into the ship. And in all likelihood, it, they're probably dead over there. But, but, this brings us out of combat as the Mapui contacts you as it swings around. Peter Guicha. Come in. What is your status? Everybody still alive over there? We singed, but we're alive. <laughs> ah! Excellent. Some, some systems down. <laughs> well, you'll be glad to hear that the other ship has been incapacitated. We thought we'd uh, at least try and join in the fun you were evidently having with that other ship, but, well, it seems you've gone and done the deed very well, in fact. We're reading no life signs from the ship you engaged. Seems there's an awful lot of radiation leaking forth from the engineering plant. Nevertheless, the opposing ship we've managed to effectively disable by knocking out their power subsystems. 
we are reading a small number of fires and such going on on the uh, bird of prey that we engaged. We can't tell yet whether or not there's any life signs, but it's looking... Well, shall we say, unlikely. The creature has suffered some significant damage to its structure, but with any luck we'll be able to uh, assist you. However, it seems for the meantime, the ship you uh, you engaged has uh, got a lot of radiation that needs to be cleaned before uh, we go venturing onto that ship. Luckily, the ship that we engaged on the Mapui seems to be somewhat safer to board if you're wishing to. So, if some would like to remain on board the Guicha and effect repairs while others come with us and maybe see if we can interrogate the other ship's command, uh, computer system to see how they knew where to find us. Yeah, I'll flesk isn't much for... Oh wait, no, I've got good persuasion. Uh... Okay, I'll we'll go what the interrogation team. I mean, she's got left in righty after all. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Flesk was going with or staying behind? I don't know, I want to check with Tavish. Uh, if Tavish is okay to repair on her own. Uh, I should be alright to repair this. Cool. Definitely want Garo with us. Mm. Uh, some Klingon interrogation. <laughs> okay. Garo? Uh, Tavish is okay at doing uh, repairs to the Guicha, that's cool. You're, uh, you're is, still on the uh, Klingon com effect. <laughs> is Dr. Sot going with the uh, the team boarding the other ship, or is mm. uh, Dr. Sot remaining behind? Uh, the I'll board the ship as well. Okay. Are we leaving Lian Chang mm. to assist with repairs with Tavish? Yeah. Can't leave Tavish on her own. Who knows what <laughs> she might do? <laughs> exactly. Never know what she'll get up to. Hook up. Time to hook up Nil to Equi Charles' computer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The one's here to stop me. <laughs> Have I got cool. everybody? No, I don't. Okay, so. Uh, Engaging... Matt, you've still got the. Um, and that's just deliberate. You've still got your, like. Communicate your effect on. Oh, thank you, bud. With your voice. Are uh, you still got the sort of like? There we are. There we go. Thank you for that. Didn't realise I left it on. That's right. It just makes you a bit quieter as well. See. Just oh really? Interesting. In there. Thought it made me louder. Okay, cool. So, um, folks, get together on the uh, Guichar's transporter pad in order to uh, get ready to beam on board. So. When you uh, arrive, Blask, Garrow, Gurkow, and Sot on the bridge of the um, remaining Bird of Prey, you find the place pretty much a wreck. Um, a lot of the consoles are blown, there's fire even coming from some of the areas. The Klingons on the bridge all appear to be very much dead. Mostly from uh, shrapnel and explosive damage, burns and the like. I wanted to check uh, Captain Krent for and his console for okay, any like well, uh, pass keys or anything, so I can try and get information from the ship. His command chair, fine, fair, and good. Okay. So, anybody wanting to access the computer systems on this bird of prey are going to need to give me control and engineering more than likely. If I can get some assistance from Gurkha. <laughs> okay. Oh. 
I was just thinking. Okay. If it's okay, I'll take a point of momentum to use my did the reading. Okay. <clears throat> so you can use science instead. Yeah. That's fine. Exactly. Hopefully, get some more momentum. Ooh, Lello, you know how you said... Uh, Aaron figure. <laughs> figure. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I wanted an assist. <laughs> Excellent. And then Cut is having a focus. Wow. Okay. <laughs> if you really want to, you can spend a uh, point of determination to re-roll that, any of those if you want. Yeah, can I... Uh, re-roll both, I guess? If you yeah, why not? really want to, although the ten was a success, so... Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I'll just re-roll the one. So you re-roll the twenty. Okay. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> Same as before, so no change. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Never okay, figure. so, uh, um... Trying to access the computer system, especially on the command throne of the bird of prey, what you meet is uh, a very, very quickly is a firewall. Very much throws up the Klingon uh, symbol for um, "Thou shalt not pass." Essentially, with a very loud bang, the flashing of uh, red on the screen. Uh, yes, the the computer system is not allowing you access. Let's see if there's like a. Pasky, or if I put, um, what's his name, Captain Kren, hand on the console, see if it can bypass. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Trying again. I like it being a bit more creative. Because, um, yes. It's like a DNA scan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can try that again by all means. Yeah, using his hand, I'll also call upon Gurkow again. <laughs> Alrighty. I won't do the re. I've not done any reading in using a corpse's um, body. <laughs> part of let's, the corpse. Never mind. Actually, that's let's keep better. That. That's much better. Uh, okay. I'll try not to screw it. <laughs> okay. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> I started sweating there for a minute. Oof. Right, okay, so, two successes, not bad at all. Um, for some strange reason, even with the uh, using the captain's uh, palm print, there's um, still limited access allowed, which is odd considering you're using the captain's command throne. The computer system here seems to be very, very closed. Very, 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 very secure. More than you're used to seeing on your average Klingon ship. And you guys have been around Klingons long enough now to know that, um, you know, they're, they're... How do I put this without sounding too insulting to the Klingons? Um, their martial emphasis on most things means that they tend to lack in other things. Doesn't mean that they don't have security features and whatnot. It tends to be less robust than those found in somewhere like either the Federation or, at the very least, like the Romulans. Nevertheless, uh, this computer system is proving to be quite formidable considering it's a Klingon one. It seems to have a number of different, not exactly firewalls in place. You seem to have gotten past the main security. Um, Checkpoint, I suppose you could say, when accessing the uh, accessing the, the computer system. But uh, a lot of the information seems to be hidden behind different levels of data obfuscation. Um, so essentially, a lot of it's made to look like junk code. So it needs some kind of decryptor or, uh, or cipher um, in order to try and get past this extra level of security. Now, um, you do, of course, have the option, if you really, really feel like you're getting stuck in a bind, to um, basically ask Tavish to beam over and assist, because she's quite well known for her hacking skills. Tavish, help! <laughs> Garrow tried punching it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not coming over. Make me. I'm your... Wow. I'm your commander officer. 
that. So <laughs> <laughs> it's an order. I Is can't order. order. We're we're not on duty, so I can't. Technically, uh, you're right. correct. Oh. Yes, you're not under any command structure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can't. Uh, I'm making a shiny new engineering droid for you. Okay. <laughs> wow, you didn't put up much of a fight, did you? Uh, ho ho hold on, hold on. I'm actually going to put up a fight. One time. One time I'm allowed to uh, connect to the main computer on the combs. I can't in a it, 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 In a diary emergency. I will not get in the way. Okay, that's going to look for me. Captain <laughs> or... The command, my commanding officers. If they stop it, I can't stop it. But I will not stop you if they agree. Okay. This unit is definitely behind any attempt to connect it to a main computer. What was that? <laughs> this unit is definitely behind any attempt to connect it to a central computer. See, me no. Basically, On the right no. Yes. Okay, I'm coming over there. <laughs> I'm on my way. What do you want me to hack? Oh, alright then. <laughs> so. With the red hum of uh, the, the teleportation beam, uh, Tavish appears on the bridge of the Klingon ship. So, yes, they appear to need Tavish's help with trying to break into this very, very odd uh, computer system here on this uh, Klingon ship. That okay. will assist for parent figure and to try and learn from Tavish. <laughs> Can I get Dr. Sot, actually, to give me a reason and Medicine check, please. Sure. Two dice? Yes, please. One success. Okay. Mm. It's entirely possible that if they've been... If the Klingons have been this robust with creating some kind of, like, palm print system then it's possible they might have introduced other security uh, procedures as well in regards to using um, somebody's uh, body as a means of uh, getting past security. So even though the palm print kind of worked in order to gain access, the actual data is all kind of scrambled. But with Dr. Sot looking at the rather unusual design of some of the systems linked to the uh, command throne, otherwise known as the captain's chair. Um, you wonder if there's perhaps some kind of failsafe in the system, because there seems to be almost like a, um, a a patient monitoring system that you're used to seeing in most bio beds attached to this command throne. So you wonder maybe if the the palm print is only part of one of the security measures to get past. It could entirely be that this thing is looking for a live, uh, a live Klingon. And to that end, since this captain isn't dead by that long, it could <laughs> be possible for you to partially resuscitate this captain long enough to fool the um, the biosensors on the command throne, perhaps. So, whilst Tavish is hacking the system with a guy's palm on it, uh, is, is Dr. Sop performing CPR? <laughs> or at the very least, the, the 24th century equivalent of maybe um, putting like those um, neural shockers on just to get um, like the Captain Trent's um, heart beating or something. Something enough to cause... Uh, the monitoring systems in the throne to be fooled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can try that. All right. So this is definitely going to be now. 
emergency medicine as a focus, incidentally. Or trauma surgery, even. Yeah, because resuscitation and that kind of thing is going to be part of emergency medicine, so I, I can agree with that. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um... Let's keep it reason and medicine, but there's also going to need to be uh, reason and engineering from Tavish to hack the computer system at the same time. I would also contend that uh, Garrow might be necessary here to, because he's got better security rating than everybody else. Try and help you get past this. Alright, so Dr. Sot is leading the charge on this one. So if we can get Lesk and Tavish and Garrow to join in on this with one dice each. Okay. Yep. Uh, which, which, um, which tribute? So for Garrow, I'm gonna go with Reason and Security, please. Reason. Because Garrow is trying yep. to guess how, they, how this security system works. Tavish okay, is okay. using. Sorry, just just one, yeah. Just one, please, yeah. Tavish, if you can do this for me, Mark, um, is going to be using reason and engineering to get past the uh, the code, the computer code, using the computer's focus. One dies. Oh, it was a twenty, but it went to an eight. Nice. So that's five successes in total. Nido. Bing bang bong. Boosh. All of you working together manage to fool the computer system long enough to start bringing up data. And uh, the data starts to spool past. So, was there anything specific you were looking for? Their, their stated mission in either following us or within the area, but also any additional passwords, ciphers, so we can get past systems in the future a bit easier. Anybody else want to add to that, or is everybody okay with, uh, with what Mark just suggested? Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Yay. Alright then, so looking oh, and, um, at their. Go on, sorry. Oh, sorry, like any in a, like the standard stuff you'd take in a sort of espionage mission, like uh, ship uh, schematics and okay. either design weaknesses or putting on secrets in ship design. Okay, so the first pieces of data that you're able to access are probably the easiest, and that's the uh, ship logs. Um, I mean, the last couple of entries you've had from anything are basically all the damage reports and the reports of from the from the ship when um, the, uh, the the bird of prey was making its attack runs on you, but then suffering damage. So then is the screeds of damage reports coming in. But um, going a little bit further back than that, you find a couple of um, logs which suggest uh, communications came in with. Um, Priority. What's the word I'm looking for? Priority authorization. Not priority. That doesn't make any sense, man. High authorization levels. But they're very much not authorization from the Klingon High Council. These access codes apparently correlate with high up members of House Mokai. And uh, the mission statement was to uh, the Mapui has been uh, tracked. The Mapui's attempts to find or to poll the Klingon database for a Cora and an Ascade of House Mokai were logged and uh, then backtraced in order to locate the Mapui. Captain Kren and the other ship were given marching orders to intercept the Mapui on its course and Essentially, um, it says in the orders that these guys were given destroy the Mapui, leaving no survivors. 
these orders Obviously take that as evidence yep take that as evidence <laughs> these orders have um, obviously an authorization stamp that doesn't correlate with a name but it does have a uh, location stamp on it that uh, were you to look it up you could probably um, use it to find out where these orders came from rather than necessarily who um, as you then start looking to utilize uh, access codes and access schematics of the um, of the of the ship, there another um, red alert screen comes up, and in Klingon, again in a dialect of Klingon you haven't come across, so it's more than likely the Mapui's own, uh, not Mapui, the Mokai's own um, Klingon dialect. Um, you are being asked a question, and there's a countdown. Seven, six, five, four. What was the three word two. we learned? Just say the word that we learned. Yeah. You're going to enter that word, okay? Three, choha. Two, one, zero. Mm, an alert goes off. Uh, your universal translators recognize self-destruct sequence initiated. One minute countdown. There will be no further warnings. Uh, let's beam off then. All of the uh, all of the consoles <laughs> start reading. Fifty nine, fifty eight, fifty seven. Right off you go, quick. Emergency <laughs> beam out, quick. Yep, 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 yep. So initiating emergency beam out. <laughs> All right. Uh, in one state or another, we find ourselves back on either the Mapui, as uh, the Mapui basically has uh, beamed the Guicha into its uh, bay so that uh, uh, the repairs can be continued there, which means that Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang has been picked up. The Mapui are the ones who um, beam you out quickly and uh, angle the, the, the ship away qu uh, as fast as they can to get as much distance between themselves and the uh, ship that goes basically kaboom as it self-destructs. But you do have the data that you retrieved. So, is there anything specific you'd like to do first, or do you just want to get straight to the data that you retrieved? Uh, can we... Because there was a radiation leak on the other ship. Is that now safe to try and do the same thing on that ship? <laughs> Not really. Okay. And you've got to wonder about how you're going to fool the security systems on that ship. When there's radiation. Um, <laughs> can I finish off fixing the Guichar? The Guichar, yes, yes, yes. It's a good point, actually. So, the Guichar suffered uh, tr two lots of structural damage. So... That kind of damage, since Flesk has already used, is once so often repairing of a breach. Uh, the Guicha... There's not a limit on that, is there? Let I me check. forget. Check. Let's have a check. Yeah, because I think that's just every time I attempt the repair. So... It's like... Repair team leader. You can... Yeah, yeah. So every time you succeed, you can spend three momentum to repair a breach. If you did that one more time, probably with help, you could probably stabilize the Guicha enough that um, it it won't fall apart at first uh, first blush the next time it gets hit. Yeah, because can I repair the structure and then spend momentum to repair the breach or breaches? Okay. Because we've got. It's it's per damage control task. So if I repair the structure, spend three momentum, mm -hmm. that fixes one breach. And we then... will have Engineer Keth of the Mapui help you with this. Basically, Captain Nakul goes, Keth, you worthless dog! Go fix this ship with them! Prove that you're actually worth the space you take up! <laughs> yeah, let's try and get the... We chop back up to as good as when we took it. I slowed up his soft um, Hopkins. Because uh, it's damaged the structure, but wasn't there something else that was damaged? 
Uh, structure twice, so that's what you need to take care of, it's just the superstructure of the ship. So, can we have a daring and an engineering check? Um, Tavish would probably be a good one to f help with this. Anybody else who wants to help, really? I mean, Engineer Keth is going to assist too. Okay, um, hang on, I will as well. Uh, if I leave this, yours. Yep, uh, okay. I can use Legion of Honor and Starfleet Medal of Honor if we succeed to get a total of four bonus momentum <laughs> to spend on repairing. Okay, in that case, can I have Mr. P, you were about? Yes, so, sure I am. Yes, you are? Okay. Can I get you to be Tavish, then, if Mark is being Flesk? Mm-hmm. So Tavish is giving us uh, daring and engineering. Um, hmm. No focuses on this, because it's to do with structural uh, engineering. Uh, was I'm assisting it, yeah? If, uh, yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mind, if I, mind if I jump in as well? Absolutely cool. not. Uh, one dice. Garrow, 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 Garrow. Yes, one dice from Garrow, please. Uh, daring and engineering. Not bad, not bad, folks. That's yeah. five, which means you get the three extra over and above, which means you can spend those instead of spending your momentum pool, because it'll only get refilled back anyway, to repair a breach on the Guicha. But I'm also going to use the Medal of Honor because mm -hmm. the uh, repair team leader I can spend three momentum repeatedly. Yes. So I'm actually only going to take one momentum from the mentor pool, use the Starfleet Medal of Honor, and then repair both breaches. You are going to have to spend another three momentum again after that one spend. Uh, no, because I use Starfleet Medal of Honor, it gives me two bonus momentum. Ah. Plus one. And then we had, so that's a total of three. Two bonus, one from momentum, and then we had three from that okay, successive yep. roll. Groove, groove, that's two groove, breaches. Groove. And so, the structure's now Yes. <laughs> and the breach is solved. Nice. The shields will also be uh, repaired, as will the power be rekindled. So the uh, during the journey that you will soon be taking, um, the uh, the lot of you can assist with uh, doing repairs to the Guicha. Meanwhile, those that were not actively involved in repairing the Guicha can have a look at the data that you managed to uncover. And yes, you've got evidence that somebody um, tracked and ordered the destruction of the Mapui in order to stop you looking into what they didn't want you looking into. And what you had was a location stamp. The location stamp, uh, when Akul's uh, operations officer, Tronum, uh, runs the ID, seems to indicate a planet in the Aral Zone. The Aral Zone isn't terribly occupied as far as parts of the um, Klingon Empire goes. It's rather inhospitable and has long since been played out of any resources that the, the system may have had. So it's basically an empty, uh, an empty system um, where all of its mineral wealth has already been plundered. So, there's no reason for anybody to go there or be there. Nonetheless, that's what the location stamp on these orders uh, indicates, that whoever ordered the Mapui be intercepted and destroyed issued it from a planet in the Aral Zone. So, that seems to be as good a direction as any to go in. How as far such, are we was it from our original mission objective? Before going to we... the way station, it is a diversion, but um, it's a little bit more of a solid clue than the one about um, a scar day of House Mokai passing through a, uh, a space station or a relay station. It depends which one you think you would rather follow up on. I'm not sure. What do other folks think? 
Which one seems the uh, more solid clue to the lot of you? Well, okay. the order stamp is the best endpoint. It's just, could we pick up more information at the way station or what to expect there? Uh, Chris, what do you think? Um, I, I, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going with the majority here, so. <laughs> ah, the, the non-committal, the non-committal answer. I, I like the idea of doing some further investigation and recon before heading to that uh, unknown destination. So okay. we'll be careful. To expect. What was that, Mr. Powell? I just said, yeah, I can't be too careful. So you'd rather go to the way station first in order to see if you can pick up any extra clues. Okay, uh, is Connie back? Uh, I oh, agree with that as well, by the way. Okay. Extra clues it is. So, to the way station then. Alright then. The Mapui diverts to the way station, which will work in your favour because then when you do dock with the way station, um, parts and systems that you can use to repair the Mapui are more readily accessible. Um, so for those who are not actively involved in um, overseeing the repairs whilst you're at that uh, place, allows Captain Akul and the others of you to inquire around as to a scar day of House Mokai. You don't get much. Um, thanks to Captain Akul's status, um, you are allowed into the uh, security areas. <laughs> Um, you do attract attention, though, because you're, you know, Federation types in Klingon space. But for the moment, they seem to be tolerating you. But you're all in civvies as well, so you could be traders. So they don't give you that much of, uh, of the stink eye. But like I said, Captain Akul's um, social status and authority seems to still mean a lot here. So he helps you get through. Um, any security checkpoints you need to, and see the security office itself in regards to this way station. You don't get much. What you do get is a record of an Ascardi of House Mokai landing a kind of a, a cargo shuttle about two weeks ago in this opera in this in this station, and uh, fills up on um, deuterium and anti-deuterium needed to basically power the, the cargo shuttle's warp core. What is noted, however, is that there's only one passenger uh, registered, and the um, sensor reports of when Ascardi of House Mokai docked uh, does indicate that she was apparently alone when she docked, and was still alone when she left. Uh, no scans of the shuttles show anything out of the ordinary, but considering who you're dealing with, uh, fooling sensors isn't that big a deal. And they had no reason to scan her, really. So, um, the direction, the heading that um, Ascardi of House Mokai left on does match um, the heading she would need to take in order to get to Starbase 234. So it seems that this way station was her stop on the way to retrieving, abducting, whatever she did with um, your first officer. But that's about it. There's not much more data on this Ascardi of House Mokai. So, with that in mind, what would you like to do now? So there's nothing else we could get on the ship, uh, nothing... No, I mean, about... the Klingons did only a very preliminary scan of the shuttle. They didn't do much, or put much effort into it whatsoever, so... Asking around, because she would have left the ship at some point, did they get any information on her or any suspicious behaviour? Apparently not. <clears throat> She was just another another Klingon passing through. She just came in, picked up her supplies, and left. 
but the uh, visual record does match the person you saw in the holding cell of um, Starbase 234 when you were last there. So, seems like this is your suspect. I suppose we just take a copy of those security logs. Security and Very well then. Next place, I see is, well, do they have any inf more information on the place we're about to go to? The Aral so, Zone? No, they, they tell you the same thing that um, Captain Akul and his lot does. There's at one point in the history of the Empire, it was a very busy mining operation, basically. <laughs> but in typical Klingon fashion, they mined the place out until it couldn't yield any more, and they just left it. So there's been no um, no no miners, no traders, no anything coming out for quite some time. Cool. I guess we've got what we can from here. <laughs> To the Aral oh, Zone next, then, is it? Or... I've got on some blood wine as well. Ha! Ah, well, of course. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a given with any Klingon ship, really, isn't it? Okay. So, next, we travel to the Aral Zone, which takes a couple of hours, but now the Guichar and the Makui are both in pretty good working shape. When you do finally reach the Aral Zone... Pardon me, not the Aral Zone. The Aral Zone was where you got intercepted. The Uradan system was what I was... Um, what I was aiming for. Nevertheless, still the same thing. Uh, the same system, I just confused the names. Uh, according to the location stamp on the communication that you intercepted, or rather retrieved from the uh, Mokai ship, the third planet in the system seems to be where the communication originated from. You eventually make orbit. Can you see that map? It looks like a sort of big red blur for me. <laughs> looks, like like, looks, like, looks like my view of the Aurora Borealis last night. At least you saw the Aurora Borealis last night. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's ah, right. pretty much what I saw last night. Was that? Inc incidentally, um, Mark, you just put the link to Little Kitty Big City. Oh, that was me. Oh, I that was you. Sorry. That. Yes, to Connie, a big <laughs> one. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's something that came up in my Steam feed um, not a couple of days ago, actually, and I was curious about it. So yeah, so that's my seeing, bad. I've been seeing some good stuff about that as well. I was wondering if I sh if I should partake or not. So there we are. If if, you, if you've got a recommendation <laughs> there. No, I've not played it. I just saw like cats. Like, oh, Connie, I like that. So I was meant to like send it to her. But there we are. Now I'm going to experience it. Okay. I guess I will have to try a demo myself. But anyway, <laughs> this episode has been sponsored by <laughs> Little Kitty Big City. <laughs> I wish. Other video games are available. Yes, yes, yes. Right, okay, sorry. Yes, so um, you have made it into orbit of this planet. Going back to the bridge of the Mapui for a moment. Um, Operations Officer Tronum is busily, um, busily trying to scan uh, the planet. Captain, I'm not getting any readings from the planet whatsoever. A call kind of swings around in his command throw. What do you mean, no readings whatsoever? Surely you must be getting something. Atmosphere, wind speed, something. At which point Tronum just shrugs. I'm sorry, Captain, I'm getting nothing. Sensors can't even penetrate the outer atmosphere. My whole crew are useless. Lieutenant Gurkow, perhaps you should show him how it's done. Just that. <laughs> so it's this guy, the operations officer. I mean, junior officer sh um, sure would, but you know, not until he's told to. <laughs> so, he is a lowly back. 
But um, yeah, if you want to give uh, control and science, can I? Actually, no, never mind. I will do it myself for the Pui. Since you guys don't have easy access to it. I will aid with sensors and science from the Mapui. We're not holding out much because it's a Klingon ship. <laughs> oh yeah. What are the chances that our... Uh, can I assess the probability of creating a... Um, getting better results? I'll go with that. Than the other. Okay. Because... I tried to come up with reasons for it. Oh. Okay. You get nothing, which is as, as, uh, as well as Officer Tronum, which is suspicious. You should be getting something. You are getting nothing. No readings. You know there's a planetoid there, but you couldn't... You're not getting any information on what the atmosphere is, what the gravity is, where what the wind speeds are, what the weather's like. You can't even, for the most part, get any reading on topographical data whatsoever. It's really, really odd. So with that information, what would you like to do now? Should we send out... Hmm, is it possible to send out a probe to get closer before we decide to potentially disembark? Fantastic idea! A science probe! <clears throat> Captain Akul yells. Very good. Tactical. Load a probe. Um... At which point, tactical officer Thorak. A probe, Captain? You know, a scientific method of analyzing the damned planet. You know what a probe is, don't you, Thorak? Of course, Captain. It's just, um... I don't tend to launch probes all that often. Oh, for heaven's sake! <laughs> Lieutenant Garrow, would you please show this patak how you launch a scientific probe? Yes, I will. Firstly, how did you people ever get out of the academy? <laughs> right. Probe. It was. Can I get control and security from Lieutenant Garrow, please? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And I don't really have any focuses on that. Not really, no, so you'll just have to go with shipboard tactical systems is the closest. It's not really a tactical system you're using, so, yeah. So I, so I use the focus on this, yes? Yeah, go on. Okay, two dice? Yes, please. Much better, okay. Uh -huh. So yes, as you can, as Garrow can tell when he goes to the, uh, the, the tactical console, um, <laughs> probes aren't ready loaded. You have to actually tell somebody in the engineering deck to pull out a torpedo from the launch tube and put in a probe. So the request takes a little bit of time because apparently the Mapui crew were so not used to doing this kind of thing that they forgot where they put the probes to put into the torpedo launcher in the first place. Eventually, you get the confirmation that the probe has been loaded into the torpedo tube and you get to fire it. Since you are aiming at a planet, it takes very little in the way of, you know, aiming skill to actually point the, uh, the probe in the, in the right direction and you fire it. As soon as you fire it, you get telemetry. You continue to get telemetry as the probe keeps on streaking down towards the planet. As soon as it hits the planet's atmosphere, on the, uh, both the console, the tactical console and on the main viewer, you're getting a visual on the uh, probe as it's going down. With seemingly no warning, a net of uh, energy starts uh, engaging, it starts energizing between all these different satellites that you didn't realize were in orbit until you saw them light up in response to the probe. This energy net spreads itself across the entire outside of the planet, and as the probe goes through it, these very same satellites all of a sudden arm themselves and launch torpedoes after the probe, destroying it. At which point, Captain Akul just kind of sits back in his command throne. Aye, cha. 
They've got an entire defensive satellite screen all over that planet. Well, this complicates things. However, you have now managed to get a uh, full accounting of this um, sensor net or satellite system that they now have around. The satellites weren't cloaked, they just seemed to have this interference field set up. But uh, that explains why you haven't been getting any data whatsoever from sensor scans of the planet. Captain Akul gets up from his command throne and walks over to uh, First Ops Officer Tronum's station. I recognize this configuration of satellites. We used to use them during our skirmishes with the Romulans. We used to protect our outer systems with a sensor screening net. Not only to stop the Romulans from being able to scan our planets from afar, but also to try and set up an early warning system in case they tried to land. They seem to be utilizing the same system here, although why they'd be doing that on our mining planet, I have no idea. There was one trick that I remember the Romulans used in order to try and penetrate our sensor nets by landing a shuttle on the surface. We might be able to do the same here. If the Mapui moves within range and starts to actively engage with one or more of these satellites, we might be able to open the opportunity for the Mapui to try and fly through a hole in the sensor net. You won't have long, however, before the, the, uh, the satellites detect the Mapui and try to reorganize the sensor net as a result. So you're going to have to be quick, but it is possible to do it. That is, if you're up for it, of course. Sounds like a good idea. The Mapui Another itself is... background from a challenge. Excellent. Good mm -hmm. to hear. Ravish to pilot. <laughs> the Mapui itself is far too large to do this itself, to try and penetrate that sensor net of theirs. We trigger at least two satellites trying to just squeeze our way between them. If we picked one satellite and got its attention on us, that should open a large enough gap in their sensor net for you to get through. But it's going to be tight. If you miss, you'll end up striking one of their sensor beams and allowing them to paint you as a target. So, this will take timing and precision. Well then, let's not just stand the about. <laughs> Righty-ho then. So, let me grab you guys. ba dum ba dum ba dum well done. I'm gonna stick us here. So the tokens are close and available. So I'm gonna move us to the map of the Yorodan system just as before. But let's see who's around, who's not. Where did folks go? There you are. Do we have everybody? I think we do. Nice. So, who... <laughs> you said Tavish to pilot the Guicha. Is Tavish actually piloting the Guicha, or are we getting uh, Zhang to do it? Zhang, yeah, not Tavish. Oh, my tongue's awful. <laughs> um, do we want somebody to be co-pilot to assist? Because this could be one of the situations where... Um, uh, help might be needed. I note that Gurkow has got three on con. I'll do that. I'm happy to assist. Neato Burrito. Yeah, everybody else has got one in con. So <laughs> it seems uh, <laughs> Zhang and Gurkow are the two best set to do this. You're also going to need to push power 
uh, through the engines in order to get a good bit of speed, not to mention you're going to need to probably engage um, the atmospheric shields so that uh, in such a way that the uh, resistance of the atmosphere doesn't slow down the ship too much. So this is going to be uh, a task needed in multiple parts. <clears throat> someone to overcharge the um, the impulse engines, someone to uh, configure the shields, the atmospheric shields, uh, or heat shields, whatever you want to call them, uh, in order to uh, allow for faster atmospheric entry and of course the uh, the actual piloting attempt to get down to the planet. So, um, Dr. Sot is more science than engineering, but Garrow does have a fairly decent engineering whatever, so Garrow could assist whoever of Flesk and or Tabish wants to do any of their roles. Um, I'm assuming that since Flesk has got... Actually, no, he doesn't. Actually, no, he does. Deflector force field technology. So it might be an idea to have Tavish do the engine overdrive, Flesk do the heat shields, and then Gurkow and yep. Zhang do the flying, and we can have Chris P be the Gweecha. Sure, I've been smashing it as the Gweecha today. Yes, you have, so. Cool. Uh... Where is the green? The green is not on the screen, is it? I'm going to use the token. Uh, are you not able to see any tokens whatsoever? Uh, I can't see the green chart. I can see like it's the, right the there. No, I cannot see that. No, I can't. I see cannot that see it either. Okay, hang on. Badoop. Oh, oh, yeah. It's visible. It's someone leave the cloaking device on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I toggled its visibility to off. I do apologize. Okay, so. Um, Tavish first, then. So, if we could. I mean, Mark's going to have to take the toll on this. Um, this is probably okay, going to be daring in engineering with warp engines as the focus. Unless Tavish has got uh, any talents to use for this. I don't think so. Okay. Dark Cross gives you more. Uh, it will increase your focus Twice range. your discipline score, so yeah. Which would be, if you roll a 10, it would be two successes. Sounds uh, like a good idea. Uh, okay. Uh, I was going to use a determination as well, so we'll use Star Cross. Alright then. So, <clears throat> do you want to use the Star Cross instead of determination? No, I will use both. Cool. Wicked. What you doing? Get off the Gweecha. <laughs> we can't see people's faces. All right. Oh, there's no so tents. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> well, not nice. But you got three successes anyway, which was over and above what you needed. So that momentum goes back in the pool. So you have created a temporary bypass of the safety systems to give the impulse engines a basically a nitro boost for a couple of seconds. But as a result, you're going to be meeting a lot more uh, atmospheric resistance. So maybe this is where Garrow can assist Flesk with the uh, shields. Okay. So, uh, what, what Garrow, this is going to be daring and engineering for you. Okay. Uh, but with no focus. But Flesk, uh, daring and engineering for you as well, with uh, deflective field force focus. technology as. Focus. Okay. Just, just the one. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> just the one. Yes. Unless you want to buy more with the momentum. Oh no. Oh, yeah. uh, um, parent, parent figure. Legion of Honor. Okay. No, 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 no. You don't. No, you don't need to use Legion of Honor. I've got parent figure. So Ooh, save oh, right, that. Legion of Honor. Oh, I, how do I? Um. Don't worry about okay, it. How can I? Don't worry that? about it. I'll just okay. delete it. Yeah. I'll I'll spend momentum to re-roll mine. Okay. Uh, it's determination to re-roll rather than momentum. Yeah, I'll use my determination. Oh, I'm all out of determination. Never mind. Uh, Garrow can use actually, his I'm remaining not... determination to re-roll if he really wants to. Yeah. I'll, there I'll we do... go. Whoa, there we That's go. better. Okay, Smashing. yeah, I'll... I've, I spent one... So re-roll your one dice then? Re -roll. Much better. 
There we go. There Four we go. successes. So you do successfully charge up and angle the heat shield. So not only can you deal with the additional friction, but you try and angle the shields such so that they mm, mm. more or less don't inhibit the descent of the Guichar into the atmosphere. So now it comes down to Gurkow and the Guicha assisting Lieutenant Commander Lian Zhang. So, um... Chris Bell, if you could be Lian Zhang for me, please. Okay. She is rolling... Ooh, this is gonna be daring and con, I think. This is a seat of the pants flying kind of thing. Okay. We're gonna want okay. daring and con from uh, Gurkow as well. One dice. And from the Guicha, we're going to want yep. engines and con. Okay. Uh, any bugsies? Yes. On, on my end, or yep. Yep. Oof. Okay. It's fine. I have a yeah. a god focus on the side. Sure. You're gonna need it because these are low rolls. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. So the way this goes off, the Mapui roars in, and you position yourselves ahead of time at the exact point you need to go in. The Mapui goes off, engages its shields, and activates its targeting systems on one specific satellite. The moment it does, the other satellites light up. The Mapui then breaks off its attack as the satellites start to gain uh, target lock on the Mapui, but the Mapui stays within weapons range just long enough for the sensor satellites to start changing their uh, their altitude and attitude in order to try and maintain the target lock and angle their torpedo launches. This opens a small window in the sensor net which you get an alert from and you basically gun the engines. There's a sh the whole superstructure begins to shudder as there's this immensely high-pitched whine starts to uh, resonate through the entire ship as the impulse engines basically burn at a high temperature as you fly in, fly forwards and just as you start entering the atmosphere the sensor net seems to, the sensor satellites seem to get a read on your approach and start trying to close the gap. Your, as you speed forward and hit the upper atmosphere the, sh the, the, the velocity starts to decrease as the, uh, the friction from uh, re the entry starts to slow you down. The sensor net is just about to close within an inch of the back wings of the Guicha just as you power through. That was a near, near thing. <laughs> Nonetheless, the moment the Guicha descends beyond the sensor net, all of a sudden the sensor scan uh, of the planet clears up. For the most part, the planet is barren. There's numerous um, open rents in the Earth which would uh, very much corroborate what you've heard about this system uh, in that there's numerous what look like mines that have been completely played out. But there is one structure on the planet and it still has power. It even appears to have a functioning landing bay. As you get closer to that structure, excuse me, <clears throat> as you get closer to the structure, there's definitely power to the whole thing. But you so far haven't been challenged by anybody. There's been no communication. Sensor scans can't penetrate very far into it. It has its own interference shield, it seems. But, um, yeah, you're not getting a targeting lock on you. You're not getting readings of any sensor scans on you. Everything's uncomfortably quiet and so you make it down to the landing bay and disembark from the Mapui <laughs> now you come out expecting at least trouble but you find the whole place appears to be deserted, maybe. <laughs> There's definitely some kind of sensor baffling system in place. Can I get 
mostly Garrow, because he's got survival as a focus. But I want um, insight and security from whoever wants to give Garrow a hand. All right. Uh, so, same insight and security, same here. Yes, please. Two dice for Garrow, but one dice for whoever else wants to help. I'll, I'll help him, just in case. I'll do it as well. Just okay, for cool. I mean, in case as well. Nice. And uh, nice. Very good, very good, very good. This whole place seems too quiet, too clean. But as you pass your gaze over the place, Garrow manages to catch sight of something on a cargo container over here. There's a small splat of that bright pinkish liquid that looks suspiciously like Klingon blood. So, Garrow walks over to it. It's a large cargo container. Closed up. But there's definitely a splat of blood on it. What would you like to do? If anything. Should we track the blood? See where it's going or where it came from? There's only one splat of it and it's on the container itself. Mm. Should we open it? <laughs> sure, if you want to. Ooh. Possibly go around. Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to try and open this thing at arm's length. Alrighty. Slowly, carefully opening it, you realise that the cargo container's um, access hatch opens downwards. So you release the catches on the top, and the thing swings open. And that's when, out of the cargo container, tumbles a dead Klingon. Okay, yeah. <laughs> His head yeah, you... is on backwards. Oh. Okay. Um, examine corpse, I think, would be... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. can we... Uh... Can I give him a scan, please? Absolutely. Yeah, Dr. 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 Sot as well, please. Doesn't you. look bad. Control and medicine. Yeah, you're not sure he's going to pull through. Control yeah, no, no. and medicine. He's half Klingon, half owl. Um, control. See, no, there's not really focus for this, is there really? Uh, more of an autopsy rather than anything mm -hmm. else. Trauma surgery Two dice, go yeah. well here. Two dice, please, yes. Thank you. One success. Yeah. Okay, that's oh. all you need. No, that's fine. The your, your tricorder reading comes up with the cause of death very, very quickly. This Klingon's neck was crushed. All the bones in his neck and his trachea are powder. Oh yes. Missing somebody. I think we're missing somebody. Where's Tavish? Tavish, 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 there's Tavish. Hmm. Right. So, you've got no real idea how big this place is, how many levels, if any, it's got. The sensor baffling system uh, seems to be preventing you from scanning much. But Tavish does have uh, an engineering toolkit, uh, engineering tricorder pardon me, which is used specifically for finding um, engineering related problems which includes power systems so potentially scanning for the power that powers this um, place might be an easier way of trying to get a scan on this thing yeah and if we can switch off the uh, <laughs> anti-sensor uh, anti satellites from here as well, might be useful. Mm. Cool beans. Let's move folks closer so everyone's together. So, that's going to be a control and engineering check from whoever wants to do it, scanning actively for power signatures. Alright, I'll give that a go. With a focus in power systems. Mm -hmm. Oh, top dollar. 
So whereas you cannot um, get a good read on overall how big this place is, you do manage to get a reading on um, power cabling and power distribution. And that power distribution network seems to power a uh, facility that seems to have at least one other sub-level below this one. seems to be where a great deal of power is concentrated, suggesting either that the majority of this whole installation's power is mostly rooted to one place, and or could very well be the primary power system of this place in the, in the first instance. So, what would you like to do? In that instance, I would recommend that you basically follow said power si power cable systems. Um, can we find out where a control room is? Because if we we know where the power systems are, is it reasonable to assume the control systems are there as well? Um, it would be a reasonable assumption. Yes, it seems to be a level down. Uh, to get there, you would more than likely need to engage, uh, use a, basically an elevator system. And that would be down yonder, apparently. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm okay following the signal, yeah. if we can get to the control system. You do So, walking up to this door there appears to be no active security because it just opens allowing you access and again there doesn't appear to be anybody about there are however uh, if Dr. Sod cares to scan. There are traces of uh, Klingon DNA, which seem to be emanating from the other side of this door over here. DNA is in living or splattered up the walls? <laughs> well, yeah, it's scattered, but um, definitely. Uh, strongest seems to be behind this door here. Dr. Sot opens the door to find a pair of Klingons basically stuffed together in a corner of, uh, of this room. One of them has been speared through most of his torso by his own batleth. The other has, uh, once again, had his neck crushed. They're dead, Jim. Considering uh, how far the uh, the Klingon's batleth was pierced through him, uh, this does seem to indicate somebody or something with a tremendous amount of physical strength. Nevertheless, uh, the access route for the uh, lift slash elevator system seems to be this way. find a lift which will, a turbo lift of sorts, that will take you down to um, a further sub-level. When you access it, um, there's evidence that uh, some kind of struggle went on in this turbo lift, but the results of that struggle are not present. There's a indication of a Klingon was in this turbo lift, which isn't any surprise really, because this is an installation that seems full of, well, or used to be full of Klingons, past tense. When the lift eventually reaches its destination, 
a uh, couple of meters down from the original starting point. The first thing that you notice is that there is a long corridor that opens up ahead of you with numerous doors shooting off to different uh, destinations. Most of them it looks like our offices. It doesn't take you long before you find another dead Klingon who's been basically folded up like a pretzel and stuffed into a very small space. And this you get as a continuing theme. Every now and then you down another corridor or branch into a different room and within a very small out-of-the-way space you find evidence of a Klingon who's been killed and either folded up or stuffed into a space where they're not easily found. Each of them having been killed not by any... any energy weapon but by physical force. Yes, sorry Mark, go on. Oh, are we able to detect any um, life signs at all in here? Not so far. Um, is it possible to look at one of the, another one of those bodies, uh, not looking at the, you know, the bit where they've been folded, obviously, but any, any kind of, um, mark, say, where they, they've been grabbed, any kind of handprints or any kind of mechanical means? Okay. Um... Not that you're able to find, and that's the weird thing, especially for someone like Garrow, who's very used to, you know, f f physical, um, physical altercations. If you, if somebody's been strangled, you usually find bruising consistent with um, finger and thumbprints. If they're being throttled by, uh, say, a weapon of opportunity like a rope or a cable, you'll usually find. Um, what they call, I suppose, with ropes, ligature marks, which would, due to the pattern of the bruising, would suggest usually what kind of thing has been used. The closest Garrow can figure is that the guys who had their throats crushed had their necks enveloped by something strong, thick, and mostly unremarkable as far as patterns go. So it could be something like a a, th a thick bit of wire, or um, definitely not a metal cable, because they kind of have lots of little cables all folded around themselves. No rope, no cable, just something featureless, but was strong enough to wrap around somebody and be and generate enough torque that it crushed the bones in a Klingon's neck. But there's, there's no sign of that particular cable or anything. No. This place is still very immaculate. There's no loose wiring. You don't come across any panels that suggest somebody um, ripped the wiring from the wall to use as an opportunity weapon. There's no bruising that suggests um, fists or open hands. It's all very strange. Can we determine... Okay, so... Can we determine or have a look through or try to order so any information? The what if there are any species that are strong enough to do this with raw strength? There are several you can think of. I mean, the Gorn alone have got the physical power to um, brush most humanoids, um, and they are also known to throttle people with their massively powerful tails, at least when they're adults. Um, do, 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 do. I've forgotten the name of the species. The Tholians. The Tholians don't tend to... I mean, they've got crystalline bodies and therefore don't tend to like to do things very physically, but they do utilize um, energy and radiation quite well. But there's no sign of any of that kind of thing. Um... But yeah, there are a number of species in the galaxy that are physically powerful enough to be able to do something like this, but usually they would leave a mark of some kind. Um, claw marks, hand marks, hand prints. You're not finding that in this case. Um, 
what about, well, maybe not physically powerful enough, but this may be um, a bit of a stretch, but mentally strong enough. Well, that's, play. yeah, that's a possibility. In other words, psychokinesis. Yes. There are certainly instances out there of species who are able to move and generate force with their minds alone, so this isn't outside the bounds of possibility, certainly. Is, uh, is that uh, field still um, in, um... The field is still up enough that it is interfering with uh, your uh, active scans. And... Can we uh, can we get to that then? Yep. Okay. You eventually find yourselves uh, in a past a door with uh, that opens up into an extremely wide entrance hall, and at the end of this entrance hall are a series of steps that go up, and you eventually find yourself in a very large hall. place is filled with banks of screens and computer consoles and even off to the sides you can see more and more offices with more uh, desks and screens and computer consoles, all of them displaying various different types of information and data. Some of them have got screeds of text in Klingon, of course, um, rolling past any one particular point in time. Others are showing um, energy and temperature variances of various different whatever it is they're monitoring. But curiously enough, uh, the further you look into this immense room, which is humming with all of these um, data screeds, activity, there are more than a few screens that are segmented off, almost like security um, monitors, that are showing scenes from various places. At first you see various uh, Klingons from various different points within the Empire. There's text at the top right of every individual screen showing the location of where these feeds are coming in from, and they show planets all across even on Kronos itself. And then, of course, there are the screens that are showing information coming in from other places, no small amount of which are Federation. One or two are coming from Romulan territories, a couple are coming from Cardassia and others. This appears to be one gigantic monitoring station, or monitoring facility is pulling data in from a vast amount of sources. Can I download that? I was going to say, can we get uh, Tavish to try and uh, access that? <laughs> well, uh, it seems the primary command uh, system is over in the center of there. As um, Tavish moves up and uh, just tries to access one of the systems, it throws up a bah! alert. And that's when Garrow, being at the back, hears that one sound that makes you very uncomfortable. The sound of a weapon powering up. And it came from behind you. Oh, hello. There's a Klingon woman who is holding a disruptor pistol in one hand and has leveled it at the lot of you. But she's also got her other hand clutched around her midriff. She's partly doubled over, looks like from severe injury. But with your attention very much on everything around you, she was able to get behind you without you noticing. Don't move, Ooh. Federation. I want you all to raise your hands where I can see them. 
Do you comply? We have, a, we have a doctor uh, with us. Yes, I was going to say, this is where I come in. Um, yeah. What you know, I have to... Uh, with some combination, like, you know, my warm welcome and bedside manner talents, <laughs> I'm able to not bother about so much, but, like, you know, can we convince this woman to accept medical attention? And I'd be assisting with my persuasion. All right, leave for the gassy. <laughs> Let's to, uh... have Sot lead the way, but Flesk can assist with a uh, presence and command, please. Mm. Or maybe in Doctor Sot's think... case, presence and medicine. You? I was going to say, I think I I can use the advisor as well. Yes, that's a good point. So um, Tabish may as well too. Uh, Connie, could you be Tabish as well, presence and command? Can I steal a momentum? Tromo? Or are we okay? You got a full momentum pool, you can if you want. If everybody else is fine. Everyone okay with that? Okay, go for it. Ooh, very good. Um, you needed to roll one rather than two, so we'll take the two from there. Oh no, you rolled an extra, pardon me. But Okay. Tavish in her usual blunt manner doesn't add much, but she does allow you to <laughs> roll, but, um, as such, you look like you're injured. Does it hurt? I don't uh, know if I can. Roll one, three, two, one. Oh. Uh, I thought it was a. Uh, but. Advisor, 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 can. advisor. Whenever you assist another character, the other character being assisted may re roll a d20. Well, Flask rolled pretty decent. Uh, as did Sot. Sot rolled two successes, so I don't think you need to. No. Nope. Scored pr pretty well. Can I poke? Can I? Can I poke the wound? I think this is what Tavish is saying. <laughs> and considering um, the successes Flesk and um, Doctor Sot got, uh, I think by the looks of it, they would intercept Tavish before she did. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Tavish very much being like, ooh, that looks really, really painful, as it looks like she's going to go up and press it, at which point, you know, Flesk and, and Sot kind of put themselves between the Klingon and and Tavish. It's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. What, our, what our colleague here means to say is that, you know, you look like you're hurt, you could use medical attention. So that's the way I'm taking this. The woman keeps her disruptor pistol... Um, aimed at the lot of you, but uh, she looks down at, at her midriff and when she pulls her hand away, it is covered in blood. It looks like she's been slashed open, but the gash looks deep enough to cause a very serious bleed, but it was does not look to be serious enough that it's going to be immediately fatal. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is it a clean cut? Very. Does it look like it was done by a blade of some sort. Entirely probable. Okay. I know why you're here, says the, uh, says the Klingon. I've already prepared everything you could want. You, Tavish, I believe your name is. You'll find on the console there, a data pad. Pick it up. That contains all the information you want. What you're mainly after, which is the Chokha procedure that your first officer has undergone. Indeed. Um, what happened here? <laughs> what happened here? The Mokai have been destroyed. Just like the Tal Shiar and the Obsidian Order. We were overcome by someone far better at us at espionage and assassination. But they needed to do more than that, it seemed. They needed to expose us. And to that end, I'm afraid, we have both been used as pawns in somebody else's game. A game the other side 
has no intention of losing. Your first officer is who you think she is. Traza of House Krell. The Chocha procedure is not an easy one to undo. And the fact that she has now been made full Klingon means it will be even more unpleasant, if not even traumatic, to undo it. But maybe, in this regard, she gets what she finally wanted. To be more Klingon than human. But on that data pad contains all the information you need to prove that she is not Korra of House Mokai, as she has been accused. Moreover, because I am Korra of House Mokai, the granddaughter of the woman who was even responsible for f the formation of the espionage wing of the Klingon Empire. <laughs> Not that that matters anymore. We've been undone. And so I suppose the ball is now very much in the opposition's court, as you say. My wound is just is about serious enough. Sorry, go on, Mark. I was say we should ask her where the assailant or assailants are. And how did she survive? I only survived because they needed me to survive. They killed the others, of course, to leave no witnesses except for me. And they needed me, still alive enough to... Well, to expose the whole ordeal. Like I said, we're just pawns, you and I. You needed to collect the data needed to exonerate your first officer. And also, to show exactly what House Mokai have been up to all this time. And in so doing... Show us up. Prove why we needed to be destroyed. We're going to engage a safety protocol that's been embedded in every House Mokai installation. It will result in this entire installation's destruction within the space of ten minutes. It gives you time enough to take that data pad and everything on it, get back in your ship and leave. I'll deactivate the sensor grid when you take off so that you will not be challenged. You've got enough there to exonerate your first officer, enough to expose the Mokai operation. Do with it as you will. I no longer care. My whole house is either now destroyed or dishonored. It'll take centuries for us to recover. That'll give them we should time. If she doesn't care, let us learn what, what was going on here, so we can try and discern the, uh, What was going on here? Motivation. Yeah. Easy. Espionage, human. Denobulant. Espionage, Starfleet. Plain and simple. We don't advertise it. It's seen as too un-Klingon. But the Mokai have always done the dirty things that the Klingon Empire didn't want to do without, but was too proud to admit went on. Assassination. Espionage. Like I said, just like the Obsidian Order before us and the Tal Shiar before them. We've been doing this for hundreds of years. And now we've been exposed. Security. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not sure about the pauses. Um, can we get the security footage and we can try and identify the assailants? <laughs> Very well. It'll be on that data pad of yours. Everything you need. I urge you to go now. You don't have long before Starfleet Intelligence decides that your command, that your uh, XO is a is a spy. They'll send her off to one of their black sites where she won't be. Won't be seen from again until. Well, maybe not at all. Your Starfleet intelligence doesn't deal well with leaks. Go. In 
to tell them the real Korra of House Mokai has died with the rest of her kind. <laughs> Can Tavish's AI sort of take snapshots of everything in the room? So what sure. on the, uh, <laughs> the monitors? No problem. No problem. So, um, the real Korra of House Mokai moves up to a nearby console and starts punching in activation codes. At which point, a, uh, a general alert and klaxon sounds. Seems to be she's engaged that uh, self-destruct mechanism that she was saying she was going to. So you've got ten minutes to get out. Uh, I was going to say... Um... I could have recorded that uh, conversation, but um, seeing as Nil will, right yeah, seeing as Nil, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. All right. So, assuming that uh, Tavish has done what she's been able to do thus far, which is take a very good memory snapshot of what everything that's going on in the room, you can review that later. Uh, I am keeping that data pad mm -hmm. uh, very close to me. Uh, the data pad, which I've got um, with all the evidence on it. Yep. Okay. I'm going to uh, keep it very, very close to me. I'm holding on to it very carefully. Okay, noted. All right then. You're able to find your way out of the installation just as easily as you found your way down, but when the self-destruct activated, the whole um, s the sensor screen went down, so you're able to get a more accurate view of the place. Um, but there are no other life signs in this whole place. There's evidence of other Klingon bodies about, but they're all cold and dead. The only one that's still alive is Cora, and she's not going to be alive for much longer, it seems. And so, some time later, you eventually say your goodbyes to uh, Captain Akul and the crew of the Mapui, as you are able to take the Guichar back into Federation space, uh, more specifically back to Starbase 234, in order to quickly present the evidence against <coughs> the uh, the accusations of your uh, command, your, your uh, exo being a spy. When you arrive with the data and you hand it over to the, uh, the requisite authorities, including Captain Sobek, who's very, very keen to see this data that exonerates, um, exonerates Traza, you basically go all together back to the, uh, the holding area where section of uh, Starbase 234 and you meet Captain Gaunt once again. Captain Gaunt who if you remember was the guy in charge of security on Starbase 234. When you turn up though um, you find a great deal more security personnel than you did previously in the, uh, the holding area and to your relief, you see that uh, Commander Traza is standing there. She, even though she's still very much a Klingon now, she's no longer in a holding cell and is standing beside uh, Captain Gaunt, who has a very... He has a very strained smile on his face as you, as you appear. It looks almost like embarrassment. <laughs> um, Captain Sobek, crew of the Combs, thank you very much for coming. Um, but I'm, uh, uh, I, I hear that you have got evidence exonerating, um, Commander Traza here of all the wrongdoings she's been accused of. Thank you. We'll turn that over to, um, Starfleet Intelligence right away. But, um, well, to be brutally honest, we'd already determined that Commander Traza was not the guilty party here. About three hours or so after your small shuttle was found uh, leaving Starbase 234, we had a breakout in our detention area. And, well, I may as well show you the footage. 
myself. So from the same console as before, when he showed you the footage of um, Commander Traza Hopkins moving about the starbase and basically um, planting explosives to blow the place up and then disappearing, <laughs> you are shown a, uh, a playback of security footage of the holding area. What you see is a view of the corridor uh, with all of the uh, cells on the side of it. <clears throat> and a security guard is doing his rounds, checking in on all the, uh, all the cells. Most of them are empty. But he stops off first at the one with the um, lady claiming to be Ascade of House Mokai. The security guard stops at the door and uh, seems to press the communicator. And he has a tray of food in his hand and he then seems to lower the force field and as he does an extremely long tendril lashes out at him snakes around his neck and yanks him back into the cell out of view a couple of seconds go by and nothing happens but then the very same uh the, the sorry the klingon that was in that holding cell walks out and uh, starts walking towards the exit, but not before she stops and looks up at the security camera pointing directly at her. The Klingon woman then shifts as she transforms into the security officer who was there moments ago. And she winks at the security uh, camera before she just walks out of shot. We go back to Captain Gaunt. Uh, as you can see, um, it turns out that uh, this Ascardi of House Mokai was actually a changeling. The data you brought us will help us uh, bring an end to the charges uh, against uh, Commander Traza, of course. And uh, we are very, very sorry for whatever distress we have uh, we've caused. The, um, the changeling, I'm afraid, managed to get off of the station without uh, us being able to track it beyond where it exited the, uh, uh, the, 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 the holding area. At that point, Captain Gaunt just seems to sigh and leaves the secure holding area. Captain Sobek, at the very least, is glad to see his first officer is well, and that the charges are no longer, there are no more charges against him. But there is, of course, questions that remain, if they haven't already been made painfully clear. It seems you've been duped. The Dominion have used you guys to expose the whole Klingon uh, espionage operation headed up by House Mokai. And they have subsequently destroyed House Mokai also. What this now means for the rest of the galaxy and how the Federation are going to take the knowledge that the Klingons have been spying on them and others this entire time uh, which is some of the things that um, Tavish gets from playing back the memories of um, of what she saw in the uh, in the operation center you on the uh, on the planet. There were numerous um, feeds coming from what you thought were secure places within Starfleet headquarters. Um, so, yes, needless to say, you're going to be very thoroughly debriefed by Starfleet intelligence after all of this. The Klingon Empire, of course, denies any such claims of espionage and say that House Mokai was a rogue house operating all on its own. But now that uh, House Mokai has apparently seemingly been destroyed for the most part by people unknown or unconfirmed, uh, the actual fallout of this remains very much uncertain. But good news at least is that you do have your first officer back and that 
is where we bring our episode to an end. So, thank you very much, guys, and everybody who was watching or listening. Bit of an early finish, I know, but there we are. We came to a natural conclusion there. So, um, I don't know. What's, uh, if, if there's any thoughts or questions you guys have, or things that your characters would like to do in the intervening uh, space of time between uh, the end of this episode and the start of the next... Uh, can I assume that we made a copy of the data before handing it over to Staff Yes, yes, yes. You found a couple of interesting things in there. Um, mostly that it does seem that House Mokai had operatives um, in all, all over the place. The most notable thing, however, is that you do manage to track down the meaning of the phrase or the word you heard, which is Choha, which... Um, refers to an operation that the House Mokai were apparently specialists in, and it was how they created sleeper agents. They would physically alter Klingons to resemble other humanoid species. The way they would do this would, they was, would essentially cut the extra Klingon organs out of, the, um, out of their operatives, and they would do all sorts of other things like um, shorten their hands and fingers, um, <clears throat> break and reform their bones, implant, whatever new organs were needed in order to do this without sedation. Ugh. Which would mean that the Blimey. operative would undergo such intensely painful um, operational procedures that their, their higher brain functions would um, their, their brains would try and protect their higher brain functions by essentially shutting down and <clears throat> this would allow House Mokai to then create a new personality based on the person that they were going to be uh, in, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for if you're, in, if you're an imposter then you are Pretending to be somebody—that's that's the best. Like, there's an actual word for it, but I can't remember what it what it appears to be. Um, <clears throat> so, House Mokai had this procedure be deliberately so traumatic that the higher brain functions of even a Klingon would be forced to split off and create an alternative personality, which would then be fashioned by House Mokai into being this alternative personality that they would need to be able to pass as um, whoever they're pretending to be. And it would take a couple of implanted hypnotic command words for them to reactivate the Klingon consciousness within their brain. So the, um, the, the implanted operatives would really have no idea who they were until they were activated. It's possible to reverse the procedure, but it is only possible to do it once. Because transforming you back into a Klingon is difficult but not impossible. But if Popkin, if Traza was to be turned back into a half human, it would be horribly traumatic to the point of maybe even making her go insane. <laughs> it's possible that, of course, somebody as talented as Dr. Sot could find a more Federation method of doing this, but. We have established that Traza herself is act was actually looking into changing into a Klingon anyway, so she now doesn't necessarily need to. That bow kind of tied itself, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So, yes. So that was possibly the more shocking part of that information that you got off of that data pad and off of. Um, what Tavish was able to remember seeing. So, thus concludes our letter, little uh, spy <laughs> episode. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. As per yep. usual, um, being yeah, the end of an cool. episode. Really Sorry, what was that? I was going to say that was a really cool, like, novel way of, like, you know doing Hopkins transformation without her getting into trouble for it yes 
Exactly, yeah, without, <laughs> without Dr. Salt losing his medical license. But this now introduces some very interesting things, which is uh, how will how will Traza cope with the knowledge that uh, she's been uh, used by not only her own government, or at the very least uh, House Mokai, but also the, the ch changelings of the Dominion. Nevertheless, um, seeing as we've reached the end of an episode, as per usual, we will be taking a break for one week, so next week will we not be carrying on, but in two weeks' time. So if everybody is still around on the 26th of this month... I Connie and I are not, not unfortunately, either. So, with three of you gone, we will probably postpone this then until the 2nd of June, then. Yep, should be around. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry about that. No, good. that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. This time of the year it tends to have people doing uh, stuff and going on holidays and things like that. So, um, rather than delaying this for a week, we'll delay it for two, and we'll have everybody back on the 2nd. Cool. Mm -hmm. In that case, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for playing and for those of you who tuned in. We hope you enjoyed it. For those who are watching this on YouTube afterwards, if you enjoyed this little espionage episode, then I ask that you favor us potentially with a like, and if you fancy keeping up with when we put these videos up, um, give us a subscribe, because as we've evidenced, we do have a break um, in between episodes sometimes, sometimes they're longer than others, so you at least get notifications when we do put new videos up. In the meantime, I ask you to do like the Vulcans do, which in this case, uh, definitely help your friends when they're, when they're in need. Um, maybe be careful about uh, going into other sovereignties in order to find out whether or not your, uh, your, your friend really is who they appear to be, but other than that, I also encourage you to also live long and prosper and to engage in infinite diversity in infinite combinations. Thank you very much, folks. Take care of yourselves, treat each other with respect, and we will see you in two, three weeks' time. Hailing frequencies now closed. <laughs>